Good evening, everybody. I have just watched Nick's um, video on YouTube about how there are graphical gaps between uh, Linux and win win Windows. Um, go and watch his video because it's it's kind of interesting. Um, so quickly, my credentials. I used to be in the Ubuntu community, and one of the things that we used to do in the Ubuntu community is we used to uh, write or to attempt to write, I think fail to write is the correct response, uh, graphical tools of the kind that uh, Nick mentions in his video. Things like device managers, um, configuration tools, uh, you know, basically automatically define like what kind of computer you're on and like what kind of options you might be able to have. Um, the, there isn't a lot of demand uh, from contributors to free software to produce these kinds of tools. There is some, like you you, you, you do see it, um, but there isn't a lot of demand. And to explain why this happens, it's because if, if you imagine you're a programmer and you are basically learning a tool and you may have a, a desire, a demand, to uh, create a tool that will make this particular task easier, um, but as you learn, like what's underneath within the bowels of the system, um, you eff effectively conclude that instead of spending lots and lots of time writing a graphical tool to do like, basically like a codified set of th like single object items in a graphical user interface, you would be better placed to just use the command line, right? Because the command line is flexible. So like as your knowledge about hardware or the kernel or whatever else improves, the demand that you have inside for like making a graphical tool just goes down. Um, the exception to this is when you have a programmer that wants or needs or is being paid to look after the needs of other people. So in this particular scenario, imagine you have a whole bunch of non uh, command line interface advanced users who want a specific tool to do a specific thing, like say manage hardware. Um, you have to be able to serve somebody else's needs. And this is a particular pro problem that in the free software world, we, we, we know we have an issue with, right? Um, there are lots of people who you can imagine like Pop! OS uh, Systems 76, they have a defined set, of, uh, uh, so we say a market of people who they are developing software for. So they have users, they have customers, they are essentially not developing the desktop because they particularly are designing it for what they need personally, they're doing it because they have all the people who they, they're targeting, right? Um, so if you want to see advanced tools for turning off hardware or doing like fancy kernel stuff, and you don't want the developer to suddenly lose in interest halfway through because they've worked out that the command line is just vastly more fle flexible for their own personal needs, then unfortunately you kind of have to pay for it. You have to somehow convince pro programmers to do work for you uh, and not to work that they wanted to do themselves. Um, and unfortunately, this does produce a kind of um, two-tier system, whereas you as a user, as a non-command line using non-programmer user, obviously need the help of other people in order to, to acquire the tools that you need. Um, hopefully, in the future of the free software ecosystem, we'll end up in a place where our industry will have options for you, where you can go and pay some body, some group, some company, whatever, to basically push tools in a certain direction that you want. So if you want hardware management tools, then the, like that project will be available for you to fund or you know in, in, to, to resource. Um, thank you very much for my quick response video. I will see you all next time.